In this video, I'm going to show you how a real Slytherin would play Hogwarts Legacy. Slytherin is known as the evil house, but you don't have to be evil to get in. And there's a ton of amazing Slytherins out there who you could trust to have your back. But not me. I'm definitely one of the bad ones, and I'm willing to do whatever it takes to acquire power. The majority of witches and wizards have the same problem. They're weak. But it's not their fault. They just come from an inferior bloodline. As a pure-blooded wizard, I know I'm destined for greatness. When I learned of my rare ability to see and harness ancient magic, it didn't even surprise me. This is my story, and wizard kind everywhere will one day fear and respect the name Severin Godfrey. The future's mine for the taking. And I shall take what I must. Okay, Severin, you kind of stole my intro there, but whatever, let's just move on. My goal for this video is to create a character with godlike strength that makes hard mode look like story mode. And the first thing I'll need to do is increase my mastery of ancient magic. Ancient magic is essentially my ultimate ability, and I can store two charges of it at the start of the game. The first thing I did was find a way to quickly recover my ancient magic. This involved raiding a bandit camp. Yes, just one bandit camp. Once I had cleared the enemies from the camp, Release me! Immediately! I simply saved the game before opening the chest and reloaded any time it didn't give me what I wanted. After all, I'm a Slytherin, and no technique is forbidden. This allowed me to get Ancient Magic Focus 3, which I can use to enchant my armor to increase my Ancient Magic regeneration rate. Next, I focused on finding a way to increase the damage I could inflict. To unlock more damage for your Ancient Magic, you need to upgrade armor at the loom 30 times. To save time and resources, I just did the first and second upgrade on some low-quality armor, then sold them. I'm not going to waste resources maxing out low-level armor. My final step was to max out my Ancient Magic capacity, so I can hold 5 charges instead of 2. This involved me collecting ancient magic at hotspots throughout the countryside. Okay, I'm finally at the last ancient magic hotspot. I am about to max out my ancient magic. And here's the last one. Huh? I have to go learn Alohomora 3. To learn Alohomora 3, you have to find Demigeist Moons, there's one in each hamlet, there's a bunch in Hogsmeade, there's a bunch in the Hogwarts Castle. Once you find 22 of them, you can go back to the dude, get Alohomora 3, come back here, collect all the hotspots. Oh my gosh, the ceiling. Oh my god! Bruh. Shame I didn't have an audience for that one. With my ancient magic powered up, I can insta-kill most enemies in the game, but once I've used all my charges, I'm vulnerable to attack. I can't rely on only my ultimate ability, which is where potions and unforgivable curses come into play. First, let's just address the elephant in the room. Only a fool would refuse to use unforgivable curses, and the reason should be obvious, but I'll explain it so even the Hufflepuffs can understand. I don't need your forgiveness. It's worthless to me. If I wanted your forgiveness, I would have cast Imperio on you by now and forced you to give it to me. The unforgivable curses are extremely valuable because not only do they help me increase the damage I can deal, but they allow me to gain temporary allies to distract enemies while I recharge my magic. As if that wasn't enough, I also gain invulnerability from the moment I begin casting these spells, so I can more easily avoid attacks that might have otherwise hit me. Unforgivable curses have long cooldowns, so while I charge my ancient magic and wait for my curses to be ready to cast, I just drink an Adurus and Thunderbrew potion. Thanks to the talents that increase these potions' potency, I'm completely invulnerable to damage while enemies get slaughtered by lightning bolts around me. With all the power I've gained, the time had come to demonstrate my superiority. I started with Hogwarts students in the dueling club. Unfortunately, they were defeated so quickly that I really didn't prove anything. So I thought to myself, surely dark wizards would put up more of a fight than a couple of pathetic students. But I was wrong. Dark wizards were powerless to stand against me. Perhaps a troll would fare better. No. No, it would not. Could a powerful beast hold its own? Nope. Not even a little bit. It was clear to me that the only way to prove my power would be to fight against the most powerful goblin, Rantrock. There simply wasn't another enemy strong enough to stand against me. 
Ranrock was hiding behind an army of goblins and trolls. Fighting my way to him would consume too much of my ancient magic. But fortunately, I had one last trick up my sleeve. A dark power passed down to me that most witches and wizards feared more than the unforgivable curses. Behold, my unique ability, Quick Change Yamas! Uh, qu uh, quick, quick change artist. I'm, I'm a quick change artist. I can change clothes super fast. You see, I enchanted two sets of armor. One of them is for dealing massive damage, and the other is for recharging my ancient magic. To simplify things, I changed the look of my character so you can easily tell which form I'm in. If there's skulls on my cloak, damage. The way I've looked the whole game, charging. I didn't hold back while fighting my way to Ranrock. If Ranrock was watching, I wanted him to be terrified by the time I reached him. I used all of my abilities to completely decimate my enemies. It wasn't a battle, it was an execution. Thanks to my quick change artistry powers, I was able to seamlessly swap between my damage and charge modes so I could stay battle ready leading up to Ranrock. I want to go into the fight with Ranrock with at least four charges of my ancient magic. So anytime I use too much, I'm going to need to switch forms so that I can recharge. Man, the Adurus potion is really not fair. I mean, there's a troll trying to hit me with a club and he can't do anything because I'm just invulnerable to damage. And my Thunderbrew potion is just zapping and killing everything while they can't hurt me. This is amazing. I love potions. You should use potions too. Goodbye, troll. There's no room in this world for two gods to exist which is why Ranrock has to die. The ancient power he wants to steal is my birthright, and I won't allow him to take it from me. All right, he's unprotected. Let's see. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we just one shot phase one, and that's probably what's going to happen for the rest of the phases, to be honest. But, you know, we'll give him a shot. We'll try it out, drink another Adurus potion, and he can't do anything to me. So, yeah, there he goes. That's phase two. Done. Done and dusted. This build is too strong. I really don't think he's going to be able to do anything to me. And I still have plenty of Adurus potions left. I have two more charges of ancient magic to use, so he can't even hurt me. Here comes my blast to clear phase three. Nice. <laughs> That's. I wonder if they programmed that on purpose. I wonder if they programmed him to have 6,969 health in that phase if you one-shot him, because my spell does more damage than that, and it got capped out at that. I I think they literally programmed that in. Thanks for watching, this was a really fun build to use. If you didn't like Severin Godfrey's rude Hufflepuff comments earlier in the video, that was him, not me by the way, go see how wrong he is about Hufflepuffs in this video. Bye!